Okay, there are two ways in which you can access the syllabus. The first is to view it here as a website. So I just clicked on the syllabus link in um, Canvas. The other way you'll notice here is it says to access a PDF of this file, click here. So if I were to click there, it would actually provide me with a PDF document and I believe it would open up in the screen, although I could also right click on it or control click if I'm a Apple person and that will allow me to download it to my computer. So I'm just going to go through and describe some of the things that we've got in the syllabus for this course. Again, welcome to the Introduction to Invitational Education. I'm one of the instructors for this course, so Michael Barber. Uh, you'll notice my colleague uh, Jim O'Connor is listed here as well. So. At the top of the syllabus, what you see is contact information for both of us. Um, you've got our phone numbers there, you have our email addresses there as we introduce ourselves on our blogs and some of the other communications that we'll have with you, the email that we'll send to you and those kind of things. We'll also provide additional ways in which you can engage with us throughout the semester. Um, and basically, you know, th this particular syllabus, as it notes, right here is a general plan. Um, you know, depending on how the course runs and, and things that occur during the course, oftentimes there are necessary deviations that will occur. Um, things get changed or modified slightly. Uh, but generally speaking, what you see here is pretty good as a guide. So looking through the course, you'll see we start off with a description for this course and uh, it's just the description that comes out of the course calendar. So take a look through and, and read through and get a sense as to what we're going to be focusing upon this semester. As well, you'll notice that we have four specific course objectives that we're hoping that students will achieve by the time the course is out. Um, as you look through the text and resources, uh, there's a couple of things that we've got here. Uh, the first is this uh, Fundamentals of Invitational Education, the second edition, uh, which is also generally known as the Blue Starfish book. Uh, so that's uh, a book that we'll rely upon throughout the semester. Uh, the other book that you see there, one by Perky and Stanley from 1999, that book is actually available as a open access PDF. So that's one that you don't have to buy. In fact, I'm not even sure if you can still buy it. Uh, but we have the PDF available and we'll be linking that into the course as we go through. Now one of the things you'll note is that um, and this will be true of all of the courses that you take in your graduate certificate or in your master's in education that you're doing towards invitational education is that for unit one in every single course we will provide PDFs of the chapters that you're responsible for reading. After that, the only time that we will um, provide PDFs is if there are other readings in addition to the textbooks or if the textbook isn't available open access. So for example, in this particular course, when you start at Unit 2, um, we're going to expect that you'll have this first book by that point in time. And that'll be true of all of the courses in, in the Invitational Education Program that um, we will essentially, for the first unit of the class, which usually is the first week or so of the semester, will provide the resources for you at that point, simply because you still may be ordering your textbooks um, or you may be waiting for those textbooks to arrive if you've already ordered them. Um, but um, after that first unit, if it's a reading from one of the textbooks from the course, unless it's an open access book like this Perky and Stanley one, uh, we'll expect that you'll have that and we won't be providing the PDFs for those. So we just wanted to let you know that. Now, anytime there are any readings that aren't in one of these books, and there is one in Unit 1 as an example, you'll see when we get to the schedule below that one of the readings for Unit 1 is O'Connor 2016. That would fall under this category of other individual readings as assigned in Canvas. And in those cases, we will always provide you with either a PDF or a link to the reading. So you never have to worry about trying to get copies of those. 
So moving along, you see there's a little bit of information here about the Toro Help Desk. Um, so if you do run into issues with either the technology or if you need help with the library, um, you can see the links as well as the phone numbers and email addresses that uh, you would be able to get folks. I will mention that Tamara um, is our education librarian, so she is the liaison for the Graduate School of Education. And um, so she is an incredibly helpful woman. So if there are things that you need to be able to do in the library website that you're not sure how to do, please reach out to her. She is uh, very welcoming and uh, will respond incredibly quickly. So uh, I would encourage you to do that. So moving along through here now, there's a number of graded activities that we're going to ask you to do throughout the semester, um, four in particular. Um, and while they're listed here in one order, that's not necessarily the order that they come up in class. Um, but one of the early things that we're going to get you to do uh, throughout the semester is to conduct a self-evaluation uh, to determine how it's a self-assessment essentially that looks at your own practice and your own school or district or wherever your own professional context is. And Essentially, you're assessing yourself through the lens of invitational education uh, to determine essentially how inviting you are. And for each of these assignments, while we provide a brief description of them here in the syllabus, when you go into Canvas, you'll see a much more detailed description for each of these as you go through um, the, as soon as they're introduced. So whatever unit that you're going to be responsible for completing those things, that's when you'll get additional information about that. Uh, the second assignment that you see listed here is an invitational uh, education action plan. And in that case, what you're going to do is you're actually going to create an action plan based upon the results of this initial self-evaluation. So the self-evaluation should help you determine what are your strengths as well as what are some of the things you're still challenged by when it comes to being an inviting educator. And based upon looking at both ensuring that you maintain and continue to undertake the things that you feel are strengths of yours when it comes to being an, an inviting educator, but also how do you start to go about addressing some of the challenges that you've identified either with your own practice or with the setting or context that you're practicing in. Um, so that action plan is going to be something that you can put into place um, following the course. So for the purposes of the course, we're just asking you to develop the action plan. We're not actually asking you to implement it. That's something that, um, that you would do on your own or that might come up in some of the later courses. The third one that you see here is this idea of individual reflections. So basically with each of the units uh, within Canvas, you will see there is a prompt that will uh, be provided where you're going to be asked to write something on a blog that you've developed for your individual reflections. In addition to posting your response to the prompt, you're also going to be asked to interact with each other as you go through the semester. Um, so it's not enough to just post what you think or your response to the prompt. You want to interact with your fellow students. And, and Jim and I will try to go through and interact with you as well. Uh, and basically, the whole idea of these individual reflections, it's to get you to begin to think deeply about some of the content that we're looking at, uh, both in terms of the readings, but also the course content that's posted, and in some cases to challenge some of your beliefs so that either um, you refine how you see things or that you're able to clarify the way in which you see things based upon having to uh, discuss and even defend some of the things that, that you feel are fundamental beliefs about your practice. Um, finally, the last item that you see here is participation. Um, 
This particular one includes participation in all aspects of the course, so obviously the types of things that you're doing in your individual reflections are going to be an important part of that. Um, your engagement, particularly within the learning management system. One of the nice things about having an online course like this is that uh, the learning management system actually goes through and and it records your interactions within the system. So it actually will indicate whether or not you've reviewed various materials and your interaction with the content or your completion of the course content that you see in Blackboard is going to be or in um, Canvas is going to be very important uh, when it comes to this particular portion of your grade. So this participation aspect of it. Um, as you look through here is the grading scheme and this is a scheme that you'll see in all of the courses that we have here. Um, so you can see sort of the A through um, C range and then anything less than a C um, is considered un unsatisfactory or is a grade of F essentially. Um, so what you've got here is uh, you know, these are the, the ranges that you're going to be responsible for, and I'd ask you to sort of take a look through and read through this. Um, pay particular attention to uh, the requirements here about things regarding um, incomplete withdrawals and then withdrawals unsatisfactory. Um, it's our hope and our goal that none of you would fall into that category, uh, but um, certain life events often happen to... Um, individuals and in some cases those types of things become necessary so uh, we can look at that when the time comes. Um, moving now to the last, uh, second last bit actually, it's sort of a, a reading schedule and a topic schedule and you'll notice the way in which we've organized the, this particular module is that it's organized into units and we will give you roughly how much time we are going to spend on each unit. So for the first unit, the one that you'll start this week, it's a one-week unit. And as you can see here, there are two readings for that unit. And this is really sort of the topics that we're going to cover. And then if there was anything that was due this week, it would fall right here. Um, so as you can see going through, you'll see that you know all of your assignments will fall here. So in Unit 2, you can see that there's a couple of more chapters that you're supposed to read. Uh, one out of the Perky and Stanley book, which is that open access book that we'll provide to you. Uh, two more chapters from the Starfish book. And then there's three articles that these would be ones we would provide to you in uh, Canvas as well. And you can see the three topics that we're going to look at are democratic ethos, perpetual tradition, and the self-concept theory. And you'll notice in this particular week or in this three-week period, you're going to have individual reflections that are due. And that may be a single prompt or it may be multiple prompts given the fact that it's a three-week unit that we're going to be covering. So as you can see, here's the rest of the course, and I won't go through each week in detail. You guys can look at that on your own. And if you do have any questions about them, um, please let Jim or I know. Um, but as you can see here, essentially the course has seven units that we're going to do, and that takes us through a 14 to 15 week period. Uh, following the schedule, you'll see there are a series of course policies. Now, for the most part, these are ones that aren't specific to this course, but they are specific to the program in invitational education. In some cases, the Graduate School of Education. Um, in some cases, the College of Education and Health Sciences. Um, and in other cases, either Toro University California as a whole or even the Toro College and University System policy. So in many cases, these policies are not just for this course, but for um, the entire program or the entire university. So as you can see, and I won't go through each one of them individually, um, but I will point out a couple of ones that um, you know I want you to take a look at. So take a quick, you know, closer read through the course and team participation one. Um, also make um, uh, a closer look at this class discussion and environment one, because uh, these two here are really the ones that are going to, I think, impact 
your learning in this course and impact what you get out of this course. Um, moving down, you'll see here some graduate student policies. So, um, being an American university, we follow we you know follow all of the accommodations that would fall under the Americans with Disabilities Act, and and here's the the standard statement that you would apply with that particular thing. Um, essentially, the the bottom line with this, and it's true for um, the disability statement or the disability legislation that you have in Hong Kong as well. Uh, essentially, if there are any specific accommodations that you need, any learning accommodations, things like additional time, um, anything that would impact your ability to have success in this course, uh, please let Jim or I know as soon as possible. And um, you know, if there are other steps that we need to take in terms of having that um, your your particular disability and the specific accommodations registered with our dean of students, that would be things that we would help you uh, with. Um, you know, looking at uh, some of your written work, um, basically it should be well written, grammatically correct, and. Uh, conform to the latest edition of the American Psychology Association Style Manual or APA. Um, late work does get accepted, although you'll note there's a specific time period and there's also a penalty involved with that. And one of the things I would always advise is basically to contact Jim or I if you think this might be an issue for you, meaning that if you think you might end up submitting any of your work late, uh, because that's the kind of thing that we can work with you and see if there are specific things that we can do to help out. Um, here's some information about student dispositions that we expect all students at Toro University to maintain. Uh, there's some information here about plagiarism, which actually comes directly from our um, the, the, the university system that we're part of. So this is Toro College and University System policy when it comes to plagiarism. So take a quick read through that just so that you're familiar with um, what plagiarism is, the difference between intentional and unintentional um, plagiarism, and essentially how to avoid those kinds of things. And then that really gets us to the end of the syllabus. So if you do have any specific questions, please let us know. Um, hopefully this has provided you with a good overview of the policies for the course and essentially uh, what's going to be expected of you and also sort of given an idea of how we're going to proceed throughout this semester. So again, if you have any questions, please reach out to Jim or I in any of the means uh, that we've provided to you and we look very much forward to engaging with you throughout the semester.